everyone, I'm Jonathan, and I'm the online pastor, and I want to be the first to welcome you. So welcome to Life Springs Online. We're so excited that you chose to worship with us today. In fact, I want to get to know you, and I want to know where you're tuning in from, so send me an email at jonathan at lifesprings.online so that you and I can get connected. Speaking of getting connected, we have a few things that you can text to get plugged in. If this is your first time, please take a moment and text the word guest to the number on the screen so that we can connect with you and give you a free gift. And if you want to stay up to date on all that's going on at Life Springs Church, including in-person and online small group signups, text 411 to the number on the screen and you'll see everything that's going on at Life Springs Church. Now, if you would, would you take a moment and share this broadcast and don't forget to like and subscribe on all of our social media platforms. We've got a great service in store for you today and we want you to get ready to worship God. So for those of you with kids, go ahead and get them ready for their own service by heading over to lifesprings.online for a virtual kids service right on the homepage. Make sure that they grow spiritually too. For you, maybe take a moment and pray for God to remove any distractions that might would keep you unfocused and prepare your heart for what He wants to do in you today. And now, here's Pastor Shane with some information on giving. Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning in today and thank you so much for your generosity. Because you give, we're able to make a difference in Lee County, Harnett County, and beyond. What a blessing it is to give. It's better to give than to receive. So I encourage you to, to do the same thing, to give. If this is your church home, hey, we encourage you to do that. If it's, if it's not, you're still trying to figure it out, hey, we encourage you not to give. So right now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to pray with you. Let's pray. Father, we praise you. We thank you, God, for your word. I pray blessings over those who have to give and those that don't. We love you, and we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you'd like to give, you can go to lifesprings.online backslash giving. Hope to see you soon. We're about to tune into worship. So go ahead, get yourself pumped, maybe even stand right where you're at. And let's make wherever you are a place of worship so that you can hear from God.
and I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures and pain are never enough, and you came along. And put me back together And every desire is now satisfied Here in your love Oh, there's nothing better than you Lord, there's nothing better than you Lord, there's I'm not afraid And I'm not afraid To show you my weakness My failures and flaws Lord, you see them all And you still call me friend Cause the God of the mountain Is the God of And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. serve a God that can bring dead things back to life. You bring morning for dancing. You give beauty for us. You turn shame into glory. And you're the only one who cares. Come on, you turn morning. You turn morning. And you turn shame into glory. You're the only one who cares. You turn graves into God. You turn bones into all. And you turn seas into all.
if he's been good to you, give him praise. Every day I need you. I sing that a lot in my quiet time because uh, I'm in over my head three quarters of the time. Who knows what I'm talking about? Anybody, like, I'll be honest with y'all, most of the time I don't know what to do next. Anybody ever been there other than me? Hold your hand. Like, like I, 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 my life, let me tell you, for those that are in leadership, leadership is about navigating uncertainty. You're not only going to, pl- you're not only taking people in places they've never gone before, you're going places you've never gone before. And every parent in the place ought to say amen, right? Like, you've never done this before, right? I mean, they didn't come with instructions, and you don't know how to do that. You don't know how. You're, you're trying to get into college. You don't know how to do that, young adult, right now. You're trying to figure that out. You're, you're trying to figure out a career. You're in your early 20s, and you don't know what to do, right? You don't know. I mean, like, you're, you're constantly stepping into uncertainty every day of your life. And I know some of you, like, you, you spend your whole life, you're a little OCD, and you try your best to control everything, and you wig out and just have like panic attacks and all, whenever it don't go your way, and that's that's a lot, right? Come on, ain't gotta get any man, right? How many of you can raise your hand and say it don't go my way very often? Hold your hand, like right, it just like life has a way of throwing curveballs to you. But see, I think God allows that on purpose because let me just tell you the truth: most of us don't know how much we need God until God is all we have. And when God is all you have, you realize how that's really all you need. But you don't know that's all you need until that's all you have. And when he's all you have, and see some of you right now, you've not got that place. You come to church and you don't really like get it, you don't understand, because you've not hit a place in your life yet 
where it was overwhelming and you realize you couldn't do it. Who's, who's been there? Like you realize I need God. If not, just hang in there. You will one day. God, God gives you enough pain sometimes to keep you humble. He gives you enough failure to make sure your hands clench to His. He'll give you some down times. But let me just tell you, if you're down, you don't have to be out. It ain't over until God says it's over. Here's the deal. It depends on what you focus on. And if you're focusing on, I don't know how to be the parent of these babies, and I'm a single parent, I don't know how I'm going to get into college, and I don't know how I'm going to pay the bills, and I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Then let me just go and tell you, you're going to wig out. All right, go ahead and tell you. Go ahead and get your nerve pills ready because you're going to have a nervous breakdown. Come on, right? Let's act like this is your problem. Just hold your hand up like this. Ready? Come on, we're going to sing this again. Act like this is God. Okay? He's the rock. Hold the other hand up like this. He's God. Okay? If you're focusing, hold it up right here like I'm doing. If you focus on your problems, you can't see God in your problem. Can I hear an amen? Y'all tracking? Watch this. Hank, come on, everybody. And if you see somebody who's not doing this, they're nerds. Go ahead and tell them right now. You're nerds. Go ahead and do this right now. Hold it up. This is your problem. Now reverse it. If you focus on God, come on, somebody. Can y'all see what I'm seeing? If you focus on God, your problem goes away. Who understands that right now? Come on. How many of you are ready to focus on God in this house right now? Are you ready to get your attention on God? That's what worship is about. Worship's about getting your mind centered on God. Come on, close your eyes. Think about God, high and lifted up. Think about Him on that cross. Think about Him in heaven. Come on, think about Him walking on water. And see, you're powerful. You are powerful. God, God above, above all. It Come on, focus on I God. I believe in you. I believe in you. You do miracles. The impossible. Come on. Get your eyes off of that problem. Don't even worry about that problem. Come on. Get your eyes on God. passage often in the it's the Psalms it says clap your hands all ye people and shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph that's what the psalmist said you shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph even before the battle is won because our faith is in God come on let's do it clap your hands all ye people shout to the Lord hallelujah a voice of triumph I believe victory is ours I believe victory is ours. God, for every person in this place who just felt a spiritual release, would you meet them right where they are? Let them know that you're, you're hearing their prayers. You're hearing what they're saying right now. You know where they're at with you. And let them feel you. For the person here today who don't know you as Lord and Savior, feels very, very far from you, just 
say to him, say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. I don't deserve it, but I'm asking you to forgive me. And from this point forward, I'll serve you to the day I die. If you're praying that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. I want everybody, and I know there's a lot of needs in this place right now. I want you to get your phone right out before I end this prayer. Get your phone out, and I want you to put in 919-586-8900. 919-586-8900. And I want you to text prayer. I want to pray for you. It would mean so much to me to pray for you and your needs. All those who are watching online, just right now, everybody, everywhere, get your phone out. 919-586-8900. Text prayer. It would just mean so much to me to be able to pray for you. I want to do that. Father, stay in this service. As I preach your word, let it land deep in our heart and change us from the inside out. In Jesus' name we pray. Say his name with me. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Give me a favor. Give him another hand clap of praise right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome those that are watching via online. I'm meeting people all the time who are online. I want to give a special shout out right now to my friend Kevin in Virginia and also my friend Kathy down in Bladen County and her family. Uh, I just, I'm so excited about what, you, what, what God's doing in them. And uh, so, so, so many great things are happening everywhere. And I'm just excited about the fact that I really sense, I really sense we're in the last days. And I believe that God said he will pour out his spirit on all flesh in those last days. Come on, can I hear an amen on that? And I'm excited about that, and I'm excited to be a part of that, and I want you to be a part of that. So come on, say hello to our church family no matter where they're tuning in from. Get loud right now. Amen. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. Thank you for being a part of this. And today, we're, um, we're actually working on our TVs, but here you go. Ready? If you want to uh, follow along with today's sermon, just type in 919-586-8900 and text sermon, and you're going to be following along with the sermon notes today, and you can get them. And a lot of you do that every single week, and I'm so happy that we can do that. And, um, and, and I tell you, it's been a great thing, and um, I'm glad that you are. I hope that not only you are, I hope that you'll sit down with your family, or maybe you'll sit down with some coworkers and go over it, because if we've ever lived in a time, while I do believe God sent it a great revival in these last days. If we've ever lived in a time people need the gospel, it's today. Can I get a witness on that? I was hoping for a stronger amen. If there's ever been a time where people needed the gospel, it's today. I didn't know if y'all weren't watching the same thing I'm watching and seeing the same thing I'm seeing. I want to make sure you're seeing that. So, so, so if, you don't, if you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you're watching online and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then I, I just want you to hang with me and, and hang in there. I think you're going to get a lot out of today's message. And I think the Holy Spirit's going to speak to you in an incredible way. We kicked off a brand new series on Easter called Ready, One, Two, Three, called It Ain't Over. And don't you just feel good saying ain't? Come on, somebody. Is anybody here like, I ain't saying it? Anybody, anybody, like, hold your hand up. Like, if that's the case, you're a hypocrite and you don't even know it. You know, anyway, it ain't over. We might be ready, one, two, three. We might be what? Down, but not out. I think that's true for a lot of people right now. I think that's true uh, with our nation right now. I think that's true with a lot of churches right now. I believe there's going to be a great comeback in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. I think we were talking today in a meeting I was in, we were talking about how we can help churches that are dying and churches that are falling. I don't know how we're going to do it, but I don't, I don't believe, even though there's some churches that are struggling, don't know how to get them back and don't know what to do and they don't know if they can keep on closing doors, I'm believing God that we're going to have a great comeback. Come on, somebody, right? We're down, but not out. And maybe that's exactly where you are, and that's what we talked about. We kicked it off on Easter weekend because it's a great time to talk about it. In case you don't know, Jesus said, the same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the grave lives in us. Did you know that? Whenever, whenever you ever, who's ever heard anybody say, ask Jesus into your heart? Hold your hands up, good night. The way Jesus manifests himself here on earth is through the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit takes up residence inside of you at salvation. Now, I believe there is a thing called the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and that's not where you get more of God. That's simply where God gets more of you. And that's what happens is God gets more of you, and the more you surrender control to God, the more power of God you'll live with. And the power God's given you is to be his witness on earth earth and to be his hands and feet on earth who wants to be the hands and feet of jesus on earth that we live with that resurrection power so we might be down but we're not out and i love this has been our theme verse and i love it we've been reading it every week we're pressed on every side by troubles every side say every side, every side. come on anybody ever felt like you got it at work you got it at home you got it every anybody anybody ever felt like you got it on every side say every side anybody got every side but we're not crushed it's like somehow you survived. I, a man was talking to his wife in our church family here a few years ago, and she was wigging out about everything, and she was worried about this, worried about this. He looked at her, he said, I'll never forget this. It, it was a powerful moment for me. He said, can you think of one thing in your life that you didn't get through? Well, she had to say no because she was sitting right there, right? He said, what makes you think God ain't going to be there tomorrow? 
That's powerful. Can I hear it? Amen. You, you might have been pressed, but you won't crushed. You were perplexed and didn't know what to do, but you, but you won't driven to despair because why? You had a hope of glory. We're hunted down. You may be attacked, but you're not abandoned by God because the Bible says God is close to the brokenhearted. Don't you love that verse? He is close. He says he brings beauty out of ashes. How many of you like that verse, right? He's with you even the darkest moment. We get knocked down, but we get up again. We get knocked down, but we're not destroyed. Right? We fall down, but you're not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus. That's how it connects to Easter, right? We have to have a crucifixion so that we can have a resurrection, so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. And that's what we've been talking about. Here's the bottom line. You can get up again. Say, I can get up again. Ready? I can get up again. I can, no matter where you're at, you can get up again. Now today, uh, let me tell you, the first week we talked about the fact that Jesus made a way. He resurrected from the grave. He got up. Therefore, you and I can get up. Last week I talked about the fact, or we talked about the fact, that sometimes you get knocked down by people. We talked about the life of Joseph in the Old Testament. Sometimes you get knocked down by people that was beyond your control. If y'all remember, he was thrown into I mean, he, had, he was kind of a victim. I mean, he got victimized. Some of you have been a legitimate victim. You're, you, you, were, you were abused or whatever, molested, and you, you, or you got fired, or you had a first husband that abandoned you, or a first wife and ran around, and whatever. You, you, you truly are a victim, and it's not your fault. Okay, so we talked about that last week, and you ought to listen to that. It's on demand at Light Springs Auto Line or on our YouTube channel. Today, I want to talk about this, though. What if you got knocked down because of your own dumb decisions? Now, I, I, I started not to even preach this because I knew there would be nobody at Life Springs Church that could say that, right? Like, I was just wondering, though, what if the reason you're knocked down is not because of the devil, it's not because of somebody else, it's because you made the dumb decisions and kept making dumb decisions. Come on, somebody, right? Like, you, you lost your marriage, you, you got yourself addicted, you... you, you you made the, you got yourself fired, and you know you did, and you know yourself, you made your, you, you made your bed hard, and now you got to lie in it. Come on, somebody, y'all know what I'm talking about? Or, is anybody, or is this totally irrelevant? Anybody ever been there? I'm just curious. Wow, I am surprised. You heathens ought to go to church. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, we are, right? <laughs> if you're not coming to church because you think there's too many hypocrites, come on, we got room for one more, all right? Come on. Hey, we're all, we're all messed up, right? Amen. Amen. Can I hear it? Amen. No perfect people allowed. We've all messed up. So, but here's the thing I want you to know. If that's where you are, ready? Here's the thing. God is a God of second chances. Come on. Can we give him praise right now for that? God is the God of second chances. So go ahead and post that. I think the world needs to hear it. Put it everywhere. Post it on your Facebook page. Post it everywhere. Because I think it's a positive message that the whole world needs to hear. Now, as I think about this, uh, I did something last week that I don't usually do. Um, I, I, last week, I got an opportunity to play golf. Any golfers in the house? Hold your hands up good and high if you're a golfer, some of you. We're going to pray for you. I'm just going to tell you. My cousin used to say that he, re he knew he would have reached a place of godliness when he could go to Myrtle Beach and not lust and play golf and not cuss. Okay, now, I don't, I don't really know about all of that, but I, do, I have learned this. Playing golf without cussing is a big deal. Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? I'm not, I, I learned something. I'm not a golfer. I don't have the physique of a golfer. I don't have the patience of a golfer. I, I'm not a golfer. Come on, anybody, hold your hand if you understand what I'm saying. But here's what I did learn. I learned something in golf called mulligans. Who knows what a mulligan is? Now, we played this thing where you could play, um, I don't even know what they played it, but basically that you would hit. I played on a four-man team, and you could hit the ball, and they took the best ball. And I'm proud to tell my church that they used three of mine out of the whole 18 holes. But nevertheless, they used three of mine. Come on. Can we clap or something, celebrate, anything? Yeah, thank you. Okay. So I was very proud of that. They Three, three, of, my, three of mine they used. Now, we, we had, you know, 70-some, and they didn't use none of mine on those. But anyway, and I lost a lot of balls. But anyway, we ain't got time for that. Here's the thing. They... I learned about a mulligan, and a mulligan, when he gave us a mulligan, a mulligan is where you get to hit it, and if you had a bad hit, you get to hit again. Who, who knows about that? Hold your hands up good high, right? You know about a mulligan. Now, um, they gave us two, one for the front nine, one for the back nine. We, lost, we came in second in the tournament, not because of me, but I was playing with real ringers. Okay, you understand, right? Now, the, the reason we came in second, we might have came in first, but we forgot we had two mulligans. We didn't remember we had a mulligan until hole number 17 out of 18. That's stupidity. Can I hear an amen, right? 
Now, we just totally just forgot it. It just totally left our mind. We didn't even think about it. Now, here's what I thought about. We, we didn't win because we forgot we got two chances. Are y'all hearing me? Some of you right now are risking losing in life because you forgot God is a God of second chances. You, you forgot... You forgot you got a mulligan. You didn't know that. And you're wallowing around in guilt and shame and self-pity unnecessarily. God is a God of second chances. Now, there's some things in life you only get one chance, right? Like in a sports thing, if you were playing like the PGA Nationals and whatever, and you didn't, uh, you, you, you didn't get mulligans, I don't think, on that, right? And you got one putt to make it, and you miss it, then you're in trouble, right? You got, it's, the, it's the NCAA tournament, and it's three seconds, and you're two points down, and you're shooting for a three-pointer, and you miss it, it's over, right? I mean, there's sometimes, if you borrow money from somebody and don't pay it back, you probably only got one chance at that. Come on, right? If you wanted to get a promotion, and it all hinged on one project, and you messed the project up, that probably is going to keep you back. If you have a friend that says, can I tell you a secret, don't tell anybody, and you tell it, you probably aren't going to get another chance at that. If you make, if, if you, what is the old saying, you never get a second chance to make a good first impression, right? You just, you, you only get one chance to make a, here's another one, parenting, you only get one shot at it, so you better take a, you better take a strong swing that time, right? Come on, somebody, right? Hey, here's another one, saying things. Have you ever tried to put words back in your mouth? You just can't do that, right? There's a lot of situations in life where you only get one chance. But here's the good news. When it comes to God, he is a God of second chances. Amen. And today what I want to talk about is you, 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 your wife may not have given you a, a second chance. Your boss may not have given you a second chance. Your kids may not give you a second chance. But I'm here to tell you, your parents may not give you a second chance. Today I want you to know, if you're watching in here, if you're watching online, wherever you are, if you're watching this on demand six months after it aired, I want you to know God is a God of second chances. You might be down, but you ain't out. Don't forget you got a mulligan because you'll lose when you do. Today I want to look at a guy who lived that. His name was Jonah. And who's ever heard of Jonah? Who's ever heard of Jonah? Jonah was the one that got eaten by the whale. Jonah was the one. God told him to go to Nineveh and preach the gospel. But Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. In fact, here's what Jonah did. It says, but Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. Can I ask you a question? Has anybody ever done that? Knew what God wanted you to do. I did the exact opposite of what he told you to do. Hold your hands up. Let's all get on the same page. Yeah, everybody's here. He went in the opposite direction. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found the ship leaving to Tarsha, Tarshish. He, brought, he bought a ticket and went on board hoping to escape from who? By sailing to Tarshish. See, I know people to do that all the time. They try to get high enough to save from the Lord. They try to get in love enough. They try to stay inebriated enough. They try to stay far away from church. And if anybody gets to talking about God, they get far away. Because why? They don't want to be put in a situation to have to deal with the things of God. He knew what God wanted him to do. He was in, he, he, it was not a clear, he didn't, he won't like, God, I didn't know you didn't want me to sleep around for marriage. I mean, they knew what God, God, I didn't know you didn't want me to live drunk. God, they knew what God, and instead of doing what God wants, they intentionally, deliberately, sane mind, went the opposite direction and disobeyed God. My suspicion is that everybody in this place can relate to that. So, once he's on the boat, He's in the middle of this sea, and, and there came a storm, and the boat began to sink. And the timing of that is, is incredibly, incredibly crazy. Here, here's what the Bible says. It says, now the Lord had arranged for the, oh, I'm back up, let me go back. He said, he, he bought a ticket, he went down, he's out there, I got ahead of myself, let me tell you about the storm. He's out in the middle of the ocean, the storm comes up. Let me just say this, the timing of that is impeccable, isn't it? The Bible says God controls the wind, the sea, and the fish of the sea. And it's evidently God has allowed this storm in his life. Why would God allow a storm in his life? Let me just tell you why. For those of you that are running from God right now, God would devise ways and allow things in your life to get those who are separated themselves from him back reconciled to him. God loves you so much, he'd rather send his son to die than to spend eternity without you. How, why, much, how, why wouldn't he allow pain in your life to get you back home now i've learned i'm a horse person 
I've learned you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. But let me tell you what else I've learned. I've learned you can put enough salt in his food, he'll get thirsty. <laughs> you can also run him in a circle till he'll get thirsty. Come on, somebody, right? God, while God, will have, God will create, allow situations in your life to get you thirsty for him. It's no coincidence that the storm came up when it did, and it might not be a coincidence that your storm's going on right now. Some of you are watching online, you've been away from God for a long time. It may not be a coincidence that the storm's coming up in your life right now. It may be God sending you a message. Now, here's the deal. Storm come up, the sailors start wigging out. They start throwing everything that's on board overboard. They're trying to get it lightened up. They're trying, they're scared to death. They're praying, even the salty sailors. Y'all been, who's a Navy person? Hold your hands up, Navy. They ain't known to always pray. Come on, somebody, right? But they're praying, they're even the saltiest. When a man gets scared enough, he He'll pray. Come on, kind of hear that man, right? He, and, and he'll mess his britches, but that's another sermon. Anyway, he, he's, he's praying, and they're, they're wigging out. And while they're wigging out, Jonah's over there asleep. He, the whole thing is concerned about him. He's concerning him, and he seems to be totally unconcerned about what's going on. I think that's interesting because I believe sometimes a person that God is trying to send a message to, sometimes everybody around them knows that God's trying to get their attention but them. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I have a question. Are you listening? Because I am absolutely convinced that there are a lot of family conflicts that go on right now. Is God sending that family a message? And sometimes the person who needs the message the most is the one who is not listening the hardest. Come on, I'm preaching better than I made it. Y'all, is, is this landing okay? Can I hear that? Like, like they're not paying attention. And so when the sailors realize, hey, wait a minute. Jonah is the problem. We got a backslidden preacher on board. Nobody wants a backslidden preacher on you, right? I'm just going to be honest with you. If you backslidden and, the, and we're going in a storm and it's your fault, I'd do what they did too. They tossed his rear end overboard. So I'm just telling you, I ain't going to be on ship with a Jonah. Come on, get it right? But now, believe it or not, it was actually Jonah's idea. He said, guys, go ahead and throw me overboard. Now, some people think, well, Jonah had gotten to a place he was suicidal. I don't think he was suicidal because if he was suicidal, he would have just jumped overboard himself. He won't jump. He won't jump. He won't suicidal. He just knew that he was running from God. And listen to me. He had rather die than to repent. You know what repent means? If you don't, listen to the last sermon in the series of Catfish Christians. It means that you're walking down one way and you turn and go in a completely different direction. I know people right now that know this addiction is going to kill them. But they'd rather die than repent. They know that this is going to kill their marriage. But they'd rather die and repent. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. They know they're wrong. They know they're not taking care of them. They're, whatever it is, whatever God's told them to do, take care of themselves or whatever else. And they had rather die than to change their behavior. That's a problem. Can I hear it right? So uh, they threw him overboard. And everybody thought that was going to be the end of Jonah. But God. Say, but God. Because God. God's always got a plan. Here's what happened. I got ahead of myself earlier. It says, now the Lord had arranged. Say, the Lord had arranged. He had arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. Uh, God sent this big fish just like he sent the wind, because why? God will continually devise ways to get us back to himself. He will continually, listen, this fish looked like to be an instrument of destruction, but listen closely, God is going to use this fish as an instrument of deliverance. Wow. Some of you right now, you've got something going on in your life, and you think this is going to be the end of you. You think that God has allowed it to finally take you out, and you thought it was going to be an instrument of destruction, and it might actually be an instrument of deliverance. I have watched people who would not turn around until they got a bad medical report, and they thought it was going to be the end, but it was the very thing that turned their life around. They thought them getting caught in their sin was going to be the thing that stopped, them, stopped everything and the world was going to fall apart. But once they got caught and they experienced what was there, that turned everything around in their family. It could be the thing right now that you're dealing with that feels like it's going to destroy you. It might be the thing that saves you. Wow. Now, what changed the course of his destruction? How did that change happen? Was it because God changed his mind because he got him back and made him pay a penance in the well or something? No, no, no. It was not paying a penance. Don't think that. Some of you think your troubles are coming on because God's got you in a place he's, you're trying to get even with you and pay a penance. If God wanted you to pay for your sins, he could do that. Come on, right? You, ain't gonna, you, you couldn't pay for your sins if you had to. Jesus paid for them on the cross. 
it wasn't about penance, it was about change. So what changed, what changed, what flipped this situation around? Notice what it says. Then Jonah, what? He prayed to the Lord, his God, from inside the fish. Now let's skip on down. Then the Lord ordered the fish to spit Jonah out onto the beach. You know why? Because some preachers will even make a fish vomit. Some of you's like, I'm looking at one right now, you know, right? <laughs> so what turned it around? What turned it around was Jonah's prayer of repentance. He said, Lord, I, I'm tired of heading this way. I'm tired of being disobedient. I know what you told me to do. I know right from wrong, and I'm tired of pursuing wrong. I am turning. I am changing. I am going into a different direction. And when that happened, he went from doom to to deliverance. It wasn't God that changed. It was Jonah that changed. Amen. And some of you need to hear that because your destruction right now that you're feeling in your family, your destruction you're feeling right now in your relationships, your destruction that you're feeling in your life right now, it's not going to change until you change. Amen. The marriage is not going to change until you step up and be the spouse you're supposed to be. Singles, you're wanting to get married, you're trying to, you're, you're dating, you're trying to date, 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 you're dating all this. Listen, you want to you wanna date, you just, I just, wanna, I just want a godly man. He ain't at the bar. Right? Listen, you, you, you unhealthy people cannot have a healthy relationship. Healthy people have a healthy relationship. Let me say it another way since we're talking about fish. You can't catch King Mackerel. With, cap, with crappy bait. Y'all tracking? It's not about finding the right person. It's about being the right person. Okay, so, so it's not going to change until you teenager right now. You're so unhappy and you're miserable and you don't know why the inside crowd's not going to let you in and you don't know why you can't be popular in high school and you're screaming for attention and you're doing all kinds of crazy things with your styles and your body and your whatever. And listen, I'm telling you, you're not going to find joy there. Until you repent and your heart changes and you get it right with God, what you thought was going to kill you is actually going to save you. Yeah. And this next verse might be the most encouraging verse in the Bible, and you probably didn't know it was in the book of Jonah. Here it is. Chapter 3, verse 1. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah. How? For a second time. Wow. How many of you love that? I believe right now that, see, Jonah got a second chance, and I believe right now in this service, God is sending the word of the Lord to you for a second time. I think you're getting a second opportunity. Jonah sinned. There ain't another way to, to shape it. Jonah, God said, go this way. Jonah said, nope, ain't doing it. And guess what? Jonah, Jonah didn't do what God told him to do. No other, way to take, no other way to take it than he sinned. And God could have said, that's it, Jonah. You knew exactly what I wanted you to do. I'm writing you off. I'm tired of you. We're not going to do this anymore. I'm not playing those games with you. You're done. And people might have thought he had a good reason to do that. But thank God his mercy is greater than our sin. Amen. God's nature is to give you second chances. He forgives and lets us try again. He is a God of mulligans. Your, 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 your boss may not give you a second chance. Your teacher may not give you a second chance. Your spouse may not give you a second chance. Your parents may not give you a chance, second chance, but God will. And we see it all throughout Scripture. It's not just with Jonah. King David, King David, he was, a, a, he, he was an adulterer and a murderer, and yet God used him incredibly. Moses, he was a murderer. God used him. Abraham, he had a child with his maidservant. I mean, that's major sins, and God, God used him anyway. Listen, God is not as concerned about where you've been as where you're going. The direction of your feet matter. You can't do anything about yesterday, but you can about today and tomorrow. Because yesterday ended last night, and today starts today. Come on, y'all tracking? Amen. Which way are you? It's not about where you were, it's where you are. The direction of your feet. And if you've been running from God, it is time for you to come back. God is willing to let the word of the Lord come to you for a second time. God is a merciful God. And here's the good news. Ready? Y'all ready for some good news? You've been away for a long time. You've been sinning for a long time. You've been down for a long time, going in the wrong direction. You've been in that belly of the whale or a big fish for a long time. 
Here's the good news. When you repent, here's what I want you to know. Ready? Number one, your sin doesn't change God's will. What, whatever his will was is still his will. If it was wrong before, it's wrong now. If it was right before, it's right now. Here's, here's what it says. It said, then the Lord, this is chapter 3, okay? He's come back. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I've given you. You know what that is? That's the same thing he told him in chapter 1. The same thing that got God's will in chapter 1 is God's will in chapter 3. Can I just tell you something? God's will in chapter 1 for you is God's will in chapter 3 for you. Your disobedience didn't change God's will. None of us still needed the gospel. They still needed the word of God. And Jonah was still the man that God wanted to have do that. And now that he's got his heart right, now he's ready to step into that. You may have run from God and at some point you thought God's plan, you know, you left his plan and you don't know if it's even going to be there. I want you to know something. God's plan for your life is still in effect. There are men in this place who have never taken responsibility of leading your family spiritually, and you think you have forfeited it. Well, maybe you, it's going to be harder now, but it's time for you to step into that role. God's will is still for you to be the spiritual leader of your home. Can I hear an amen in this house? Somebody in here right now, you may have felt like God called you to serve years ago in a certain ministry or some time back, and you, you said no because you were too busy working and too busy doing your thing and too busy whatever else. It's still God's will. If he called you in the kids' ministry, go. If he called you in teen ministry, go. If he called you to be a group leader, go. If he called you in a full-time vocational ministry, go. He saved you and then sent you. It's still his will. God called you to purity. Don't have sex outside of the bonds of marriage between a man and a woman. If you've messed that up and you've gone the wrong way, I know you feel shame. I know you feel guilt. And you know what? You can't do anything about what you've done. But you can say, God, I'm sorry, and start living pure today. Amen. God's will in chapter 3 is the same as it was in chapter 1. I'm preaching all right right now, ain't I? Some of you feel like you're getting a call from God right now. It is your time to step up today. Your sin did not change the will of God. Second thing, your sin didn't change. Your, cha your sin didn't change God's power. God's power is still going to work regardless of what happened. Jonah, he went to Nineveh and he did as he was supposed to do. And he walked through the streets and he proclaimed the message of Jesus Christ, just like God told, or a message of God, message of repentance was what he was told to do, the word of the Lord. And as a result, here's what happened in Nineveh. The people of Nineveh believed God's message and they came back to God. You, just because Jonah disobeyed God doesn't mean the word of Lord had lost its power. Just because you may have disobeyed God and you've got a thing and you think nobody's going to ever believe me because they don't know what I, they know what I've done and I've done this and I've done that and I've been there and I've done this and I've been that kind of person. Listen, just because all that is true, when you begin pursuing God's plan for your life, you're going to experience the power of God in your life. And the more you walk with God, the more power you get of God. Come on, is that right? Jonah's sin didn't change God's power because he repented and he got back on track and he was able to experience the power of God working through him. The same is absolutely true for you. Just because you failed does not mean that forever you're going to have to live with this second best. Second best is never mentioned in the Bible. Just because you have disobeyed God and went the wrong way does not mean you're not going to have the ability to experience the power of God. Because you know why? I said it earlier. I'll say it again. God's mercy is greater than your sin. Your sin didn't change God's will, and it ain't changed God's power, and it ain't changed God's grace. He don't run out of grace. Can I hear an amen on that? Nineveh was a sinful city. God was ready to destroy the city. He was willing to give, but, but he said, I'm willing to give it another chance. By the way, just like he was willing to give Jonah another chance after Jonah disobeyed. And so he sent Jonah to proclaim this message. He said, and he said to Nineveh, he said, this is the promise. If you repent, I won't destroy your city. And the people repented. And so here's what the Bible says. When God saw that they did what, what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. You know why? Because God's promises don't change. He said, if you repent, you're going to be saved. Nothing changed. You know what's amazing, though, about the story? Is that after Jonah repented and was saved, and then he went, I mean, he, 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 he repented and came back and was used by God, and he went and proclaimed the message, and then Nineveh repented. God got angry 
I mean, excuse me, not God. Jonah got angry at God because he didn't go ahead and carry the punishment out. He wanted Nineveh to burn to the ground. He hated the Ninevites. He, that's why he didn't want to go to the start out with. He wanted it to burn to the ground. Now, he wanted it to burn to the ground with him outside the city, mind you. He didn't want to be in it when he burned down. But he wanted it to burn down. He didn't want to be in it at all. And yet, instead of burning down, it was set on fire with revival. They had a revival in the, in the city, and he got mad at God for doing that. Because, And this is so interesting. He got mad because God gave the people of Nineveh the same mercy he had already given the Jonah. Let me tell you why that's the case. Because Jonah had become self-righteous. A lot of Christians get self-righteous. A lot of Christians think they are deserving of forgiveness, but other people's sin is worse than theirs. They're somebody who shouldn't be forgiven. They're somebody who shouldn't be in church. Their sin is worse than my sin. And so listen, God had to deal with Jonah's self-righteousness. And the grace applies to everybody. And some days you wake up and you think, I don't deserve God's grace. I'd have, I could wear high heels under a snake. I feel so low right now. But I want you to know on that day, God still is grace. He's gracious with you like it is any other day. And then there's some days you think, I'm pretty saved. I don't know about all these other people that's in the news and all these people that have all these alternate lifestyles I don't like. And I don't know. Da, da, da. I want you to know something. God's grace is just as good for them as it was for you. If they turn and turn to God, he'll forgive them just like he did you. Can I hear an amen? Don't get so full of yourself that you think the grace is only for you. Sin doesn't change God's promises. If you confess, God's going to be there with you. There's a lot of lessons to learn from this, and I don't have time to unpack them all, but you can go through and read this book, and there's a lot of great things as you think about it. But here's the key that I want to say right now today. If you're down because of your own sin, the key, how do you stop it? Y'all want to guess? Repentance. It's all the way through the Bible. You change. Turn to God. Run to God listen closely to me the word of the Lord is coming to you for a second time this is the message of this sermon and you're going to need to respond in your heart some of you feel like damaged goods you feel like you've sinned to the place that you can no longer be used by God. You feel like you've, you, you've reached a place that you can no longer, you can no longer have His grace and His mercy. Somebody got, you got any money on you? Got a $20 bill, anybody or something? Give me a $20 bill real quick. You, you, you got some, anybody got a money? Somebody, look at, see that man right there, he's getting money out, right? Look at that man right there. Come on, somebody. Come on. Look, I got people handing me money. Anybody else got money? Anybody else got money? Anybody got a hundred dollar bill? Got a hundred dollar bill? I'm good. I'm good. You can say, well, I'll just keep it. You can see me afterwards and it'll be gone. All right, here we go. Ready? Got 20 bucks right here. Somebody give me a hundred bucks. Come on, somebody give me a hundred bucks. Okay. I, I don't, I'm going to mess Anybody planning to give this away? You got, I'm just this. All right, here we go. How many of you would want this $20 if I give it to you? How, how many of you, if I say, I'm giving this $20 away, hold your hand up good and high if you would take it. There's some of you, like, come on, hold up. Keep them up. Keep them up right now. Keep them up right now. Hold them up. Hold them up. Hold them up. You take this 20 bucks. Okay, now watch this. Watch this. I've wadded it up now. It is wrinkly. Who wants the 20 bucks now? Hold I walked in the bathroom with these shoes before I came on stage. You know what's in the bathroom. Who would take the 20 bucks now? Hope you online are not this money hungry freaks. All right, watch this, watch this, watch this. Who would take the 20 bucks now? Weirdos! tell you why because it don't matter how wrinkled and how dirty it's still worth 20 bucks it doesn't matter what you've done how many men you've been with doesn't matter your divorce it doesn't matter how many drugs you've done it doesn't matter how many people you've wronged 
you're still valuable to God. Worth a lot more than 20 bucks. Who gets what I'm saying? Hold your hands up. Come on, stand with me, please. Here's your money if y'all still want it back. I don't know. Close your eyes and bow your head if you don't mind. How many of you right now would say, Dale, I needed to hear this. Hold your hands up. Good night. That's you. I see your hands all over this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father, for every hand raised, here's what I want you to do. Say, God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I repent. I turn away. I turn away. I sin. I turn away from my sin. And I'm turning to you. Please forgive me. I want you doing that right now. Right now, I want you to text 919 586 8900. I want you to text. I want you to text Jesus. A lot of things you could text. You could text next. I just want you to text Jesus today. I just feel like that would be the thing. I would know exactly what that means. That means that you just repented. I just repented. And I'm going to pray specifically for you this week. Come on, let's sing the song to the Lord. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my That you would bear my heart You laid down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I see for All that you've done for me So worthy is the Lamb so much for watching with us and we hope that you heard from God today. Don't forget to text 411 to stay up to date on all that's happening at Life Springs Church and please sign up for a small group. It will change your life. And again, if this is your first time, don't forget to text GUEST so that we can give you your free gift. Also, please like, subscribe, and share and text this number here if you made any commitments to God, need prayer, or if you're ready for your next step. We'll see you again next week.